Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome to this tutorial on free motion quilting on the Janome 1600. So in this video we're going to cover all of the basics and how to get started free motion quilting as well as using the convertible quilting foot. Gotta say, this is one of the best designed darning feet I have ever used. So let's get started! So the first thing I'm going to do to my Janome 1600 to set up for free motion quilting is lower my stitch length to zero. What this does is it makes the feed dogs move very, very little. They basically just bounce up and down. The feed dogs are the little teeth here on the machine that normally feed your fabric forward and pull it through the machine. Well, when you're free motion quilting, that pulling can be distracting when you're stitching a smooth design like stippling. So you don't want that to happen. Now the typical advice for free motion quilting is to drop your feed dogs so they don't make any contact with your quilt at all. I don't like to do that because I find that it messes with the tension on my machine and it always messes with the bobbin feeding. I really don't like to do that. So by lowering my stitch length down to zero, the feed dogs are basically bouncing up and down and then I cover them with a tool. This is called a Supreme Slider. This is a queen size. It's quite large and that just covers the feed dogs and that also eliminates any contact between the feed dogs and the back of my quilt. Now a question I always get about this and that is doesn't that area get chewed up on the slider? This is a very delicate tool and it does get chewed up just a little bit over time but I have been using this slider for years so if you're careful with it, it will last. I'd say when you're first getting started getting used to using it, make sure to tape down the corners, both the front and the back corners, just to make sure that it is secure and stable and not going to go anywhere. It will get linty a little bit here on the back side, so you want to take it off occasionally, take it to your sink, rinse it off. Um, but yeah, I usually keep my slider on the machine all the time. When I am piecing, I take it, lift it up, and I move it here so it's in front of the feed dog so that way I can slip and slide my pieces straight into the machine and when I'm walking foot quilting I position it over here to the side because of course when you're walking foot quilting you want the feed dogs to connect with the back of the quilt to help feed it forward. So I pretty much always have a queen size supreme slider on my machine. I just change the location, the position of it depending on the technique that I'm doing. For free motion quilting I always set it up either this way or if the arm of your machine is fairly narrow then you can rotate it like this and that can fit even very narrow like six inch machines with only six inches in the arm. That works great. So just remember that you can always rotate it around to make it fit just fine. And again, I can't emphasize enough, it's like the hazing ritual of all new quilters to stitch through this thing and it's really easy to do and then you have to pick out those stitches and it's got a tear on it, it's kind of ruined. So don't do that tape it down until you get really used to using it, you get used to the feel of it on the back of your quilt. Okay, so now that we've covered the feed dogs, let's talk about thread. My favorite thread for free motion quilting is Isocord Polyester Embroidery Thread. This is a 40 weight thread. I absolutely love it. I've been using it for over 10 years. And it is an embroidery thread and that's a good thing because that means it can take the tension, the strength, the high speed, basically the torture of free motion quilting. Uh, if you use a thread that is too thin or too weak, you will find that it is going to constantly break on you. And that is why when I found Isocord, I was just a goner. I absolutely loved it because it very, very rarely breaks and I can stitch at really high speeds. And that is what this machine is really designed to do. It can go 1600 stitches per minute. That is super, super fast. So that means you're gonna be able to quilt that much faster and be able to maintain really nice looking stitches even when your hands are really rocking and rolling. So speaking of that, let's jump right into it. Let me grab a little practice sandwich that I've got prepped up here and we can talk through all of the beginning steps to free motion quilting. But first I want to attach my darning foot and this is a special foot created by Janome and I've got to say it is the best darning foot 
available. I really believe that. It is so amazing. It has so many different features. So let me do a close up. I'm going to explain how you can switch this foot out, how you can change the bases, how you can change the height. You can do all kinds of things with it and it really is awesome. So this is the convertible darning foot made by Janome. This particular one is compatible with my Janome 1600, but you can also find this foot available for high shank and low shank machines. How it is convertible is this base here on the bottom, you can unscrew it and then change it out for other bases. And so for that reason, it's convertible, meaning you convert to different types of darning feet. Here you can see I have a open toe darning foot. It has very thin prongs. I absolutely love this one. This one's my favorite because I can really clearly see the needle and the thin prongs are nice because they give you a very small guide for detailed free motion quilting. But there we go, I removed the screw. I can remove the base. And the other base that comes with the Janome 1600 version is this closed toe. You can see that small closed toe. Now, when you get one for a high shank or low shank machine, it will also come with this base. And this is kind of an echoing base. This is great when you're stitching over really fluffy, really decorative things, because it's gonna stop the base from getting caught up or accidentally stitch over and get your foot caught by the fabric. So definitely use a base like this when you're stitching over really fluffy art quilts, that kind of thing. And I can say I use the closed toe base whenever I am stitching around appliques where I might accidentally catch the prongs of my open toe foot on the edges of the applique, I'll use this instead. So it's really handy. And another thing that you can get for this foot is a frame quilting foot set. So this is sold separately. These bases are sold separately. And my favorite base out of that set is this ruler base. So that base just clicks on just like the others. And now I can quilt with rulers because you need that high edge all the way around in order to support and be able to stitch right up against rulers using the edge of the ruler as a guide. You wouldn't want to do that with a foot like this because of course you could hop on top of the ruler or the ruler could hop on top of the foot and you could crash against your needle and break your machine. It's not a good thing. Now, the other thing that the frame quilting foot set comes with is this open toe. And I was wondering why you would need two because you already have one from the original QB set. And if you notice, this one actually faces the opposite direction. So this faces the front of the machine when you have your machine on a frame, such as the Q-Zone hoop frame, whereas this open toe faces front when you have your machine set up in a table. So that is really cool. This is truly a set designed for quilting with your whole machine on a quilting frame. And that is something that you can add to your convertible quilting foot at any time. Now, another major feature of this foot is the adjustable height. So right here with this dial, you can adjust the height of the foot and fine tune that. Your goal with free motion quilting is always to just skim the surface of the fabric. You don't wanna squish it, but you also don't wanna have it so high that allows the fabric to bounce around, which can cause thread breaks. So by using this little dial, you can get your foot to exactly the right height for your quilt. And this is something you're gonna to wanna to adjust depending on the batting, depending on the thickness of the quilt. Like if I am quilting a quilt with minky and thick fluffy batting, then I'm gonna raise this up and be at the highest level because that's really thick fabric, that's really thick batting. If I'm quilting with flannel or something really thin like that, then I'm gonna, of course, rotate this the other way to drop the foot down and rest lower. Now, another thing that comes with the convertible foot kit for the Janome 1600 is a second needle base. And basically this is a thicker needle plate and the thicker level is gonna make it so that the feed dogs cannot make any contact with the fabric. So to attach this, you'll unscrew these two screws on the original needle base and switch this out. But personally, I still like my method and that is to lower my stitch length to zero and cover the feed dogs with a queen size Supreme slider. That's my favorite method and it's just a little bit faster and I don't have to worry about unscrewing some screws and remembering to change this out because of course, once you're done free motion quilting, you'll wanna go right back to your regular needle base, otherwise you won't be able to sew, right? So I'm gonna set this aside and attach my convertible darning foot. 
So the very first thing that I do when I put a darning foot on my machine is I drop it into the down position, making sure that that lever is down. It's very easy with the darning foot to accidentally leave the foot in the up position on a home sewing machine. Now I'm going to fine tune the height of the foot. I want this just a little bit lower. So I'm gonna rotate this little dial here on the foot and that's gonna lower that down. And that's giving me just a little bit of resistance. It's not squishing the quilt, but it's just giving me enough resistance that I really feel like I'm in control. Okay, so I'm gonna start over here in the corner. You don't wanna to start too close to the edge of any quilt sandwich. And let's just do a little bit of stitching together. I'm gonna to hit the needle down, needle up button to bring my thread up to the surface. That's my bobbin thread. I just tug on that and it comes right up to the surface. I'm gonna tuck both thread tails into the uh, foot so that way it stays out of my way and it doesn't get sucked into the machine. Now I'm gonna needle down again so that way the needle always ends in the down position. That's a feature for this machine. I wanna make sure that it's always ending in a downward position. Okay, so I'm just gonna start out with just some wiggly U shapes. The first thing I wanna do is check in on tension and this is the best design to check your tension because you'll be able to see what the threads are doing, are they balancing, are they lining up, and also finding that nice medium speed that I can run at. And this is really good. All right, so now I'm gonna stop, needle in the down position, and let's flip this over and take a look at the stitches. I have some starch here on the fabric, went a little bit crazy with it. <laughs> So that's why the fabric's just a little bit shiny. But those stitches look amazing. I can see pretty good delineation between each stitch, meaning that it doesn't just look like a line of thread on the fabric, it looks like each individual stitch is there. And on the front, I get the same thing. Beautiful individualized stitches. You know, this is one of those things that I think a lot of quilters can get obsessive about uh, and really worry about their tension little dots, let's say you did use two different colors of thread, maybe red in the bobbin and white on top, little dots of thread are something that you really can't do much of anything about. And that's one of the main reasons why I tell you to use the same color of thread in the top and bobbin of the machine. Don't make it harder than it has to be. Basically, always use the th same type of thread in the top and bobbin. All right, so now that we have good tension, I didn't need to really adjust anything. I'm gonna put my foot down. Let's see just how fast this machine can go. I'm gonna rotate this around and let's stitch a nice straight line. I'm gonna put my foot down. And that is the highest speed of the Janome 1600. That is majorly fast. And I'll be completely honest, I don't think I can keep up with that. I'm gonna to need to move my hands much, much faster in order to be in time with that speed because otherwise I'm gonna produce such itsy bitsy tiny stitches. You know, you wanna really honestly, you don't need to run the machine that fast when you're stitching by hand. Probably a better idea would be to use those higher speeds of the machine whenever you're quilting the machine on a frame instead. But I think by hand, I wanna stick with a slower, more moderate speed. And I might even use this dial here on the front to slow this down. And let's just see what happens when I slow it all the way down if I have a little bit more control over that. And that's much better. So I right now have my foot pedal to the metal, my foot pedal all the way down. And I'm still producing nice, even consistent stitches because I'm balancing that speed with the speed of my hands moving. And that's a nice medium speed, so. I think that that's gonna work out really, really well. So I think generally just getting started, stick with a really simple design like these wiggly U shapes. Go on ahead and put your foot down, see how fast the machine can go, and then find that middle speed, whether it's just in how you press the foot pedal or in using the speed slider here. You wanna find kind of a medium speed to rest in and then also allow yourself to speed up and slow down as your hands are comfortable with the design and your hands speed up. So really free motion quilting is always a balancing act. Let's say I didn't speed up my hands and I put my foot down and my hands were going too slow. As you can see, my stitches get just absolutely microscopic. I mean, I couldn't pick those out if I wanted to. They're so, so, so tiny. 
So this is one of those things to keep in mind. You wanna find a good medium speed on your machine and balance that with the movement of your hands. Now let's do the opposite. I'm gonna run the machine slowly and move my hands really fast. There we go. You see how big and chunky those stitches got really quickly? That was because the machine was running too slow and my hands were running too fast. So it's a balancing ratio and it's one of those things that just takes practice. The more that you free motion quilt, the more you're going to kind of get that balance in place. And then you'll know when your hands are moving just a little bit faster. Maybe there's a design, like cursive L shapes are really popular. That's a design that you can go really fast with. So you're gonna to need to put down your foot in order to speed up your machine. So that way your stitches stay nice and consistent and relatively small. So understand that free motion quilting is a balancing ratio. How hard you press your foot pedal is going to determine how fast your machine runs. And this machine can run really, really fast. So use that speed slider on your machine to slow it down. If you want a little bit more control, meaning that you won't be able to access those highest, fastest speeds if you dial this down towards the turtle. And that might give you more control, meaning that you can get more comfortable without having to worry about the machine suddenly taking off on you and going too fast. The key with mastering free motion quilting on any machine is practice. You're gonna have to stitch out a lot of ugly stitches. And I'm sorry, yes, it really is ugly in the beginning because you have to find that balancing ratio between speed and hand movement. And if your hands are moving kind of jerky, kind of all over the place, then it's not gonna be smooth and your stitches are not gonna be consistent. Keep in mind, we're not using the feed dogs. Even though I don't drop them, I'm covering them and I'm lowering my stitch length to zero. So I'm essentially not using my feed dogs, which is the way any home sewing machine is designed to be used. So I'm not using it the way it's designed to be used. And that means it's going to take a little bit of practice, a little bit of trial and error in order to figure it out and get it working properly. So I hope that you learned a lot in this video on free machine quilting on the Janome 1600. If you're interested in the convertible quilting foot, the special foot is available not just for the 1600, it's also available for high and low shank machines as well. You can come and find it along with all of my Janome products at leahday.com slash Until next time, let's go quilt.